think we can do a little better than that in this place today. Is anybody thankful for the love of Jesus that we just sang about? Is anybody thankful that we serve a great God? I said we serve a great God. We don't serve a God who's dead, but we serve a God who is alive and who is working on our behalf. Can we just give him a shout of praise for 10 more seconds in this place today? God, we thank you. You are worthy. You are greater. You are stronger than anything that we're facing. And we lift up your name today. We bless your name today, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Tell somebody before you're seated, tell them it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. Amen. I feel like we could just take off a church right now. I said, I feel like we could just take off a church right now. Just one more time. I know we've been doing it. Can we just let Jesus know that we love him this morning? Can we just send up a praise for Jesus in this place? Amen. Amen. Man, missed you guys last week. Seriously, we missed y'all. I know, uh, like, like Apostle said, we were at Dominion Camp Meeting, and it was a lot of fun, and we came back feeling energized and refreshed and everything, but, but I'm not going to lie. The truth is, there's no place I'd rather be on a Sunday morning than at Elevation Point Church. I said there's no place in the world that I would rather be on a Sunday morning than Elevation Point Church. I'm the only one that feels that way. There's no place I'd rather be on a Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Well, hopefully you enjoyed your 4th of July holiday. Y'all seem like you got some rest over the 4th. I hope that you did because we're going to put in some work this morning. Some of y'all thought that you just came to come to church as usual. You just came to sit there and hear a sermon preached, but I don't believe in somebody just standing up and preaching a sermon to people. I believe in us engaging together and going and seeing what God is wanting to say and what God is wanting to do. Amen. So we're going to do this together today. I'm going to preach and I want you to talk back to me. Okay. I'll only be saying that for a couple more months because once I, once our baby gets here, I got to be careful what I say. I don't want him to hear me say something and think it's okay. Like, oh, I could talk back. But I want y'all to talk back to me this morning. Amen. And we're going to look, uh, this is our last week of our margin series. We're going to start out in Genesis chapter number 13. Genesis chapter number 13, and, and I'm just beyond excited about what God's going to do this morning. In Genesis chapter number 13, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. If not, they'll put it up on the screen. But we see a man by the name of Abram, uh, who would one day become Abraham. But at the time, he is Abram, and he and his nephew Lot are living in the same place. Now, I don't know if you've ever lived with other family members outside of your immediate family, but it can get a little bit crowded. And so Lot and Abram are living in the same area and their livestock starts to kind of fight one another, starts to kind of co combat with one another. And, and so uh, Abram and Lot decide that they, they have to split up. They have to go separate ways. It's, it's time for them to go to separate areas. And so Abram tells Lot that he can have free choice of where he wants to go. Abram said, you choose where you want to go and then I'll choose where I want to go. And so Lot had free choice of anywhere that he could see in this area of where he could go. And we pick up in verse number 10 there, and it says in Genesis 13, that Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zor was well watered. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, this was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan. See, I like Lot a little bit right here because Lot, Lot said, you said I could have whatever I wanted. I want the whole plane. I like want the whole thing. Like I, I see the whole plane. It all looks good. I want the whole thing. See, some of us, we'd be shy about it and we'd be like, well, you know, I just want like this little part right here. But Lot says, I want the whole plane. See, be careful what you ask for. You told me I could have whatever. I want the whole plane. And, and it says he, he wanted the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. And the two men parted company, and Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. See, Lot saw what it looked like, but he didn't know what was there. He, he saw that it looked good, but he didn't know what was going on inside the camp. And they were wicked 
sinning greatly against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram after Lot had departed from him. See, I think it's interesting. Sometimes God can't do what he wants to do until somebody leaves your life. Sometimes God cannot bring the breakthrough that he wants to do until somebody else exits your life. You've been complaining, you've been crying, you've been trying to get that person back, and God's trying to help you realize if you'll let them go, he can do what he wants to do. It says, after Lot had left Abram, good God am I, after Abram had let Lot go, that the Lord said, look around from where you are, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. All the land that you see, everybody say all. all. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. See, Lot was given the choice of where he wanted to go. But Abram was the one who God favored. Lot was the one who had free choice and had what everybody else would have wanted. But Abram was the one who God showed favor to and he said all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring see it doesn't start with it doesn't stop with you it may start with you but it doesn't stop with you everybody say offspring I will give to you and your offspring forever see I love when God does something see what Lot went to what he saw that looked good and what Lot decided that he wanted to go to it didn't last for a long time because as we saw, it was before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. But as most of us know the story, Sodom and Gomorrah was later destroyed and Lot would have to leave where he was at. But God said, Abram, what I'm about to do for you, nobody's going to destroy. Nobody can take out from underneath your hands. Nobody can make you leave what I'm about to do. And it says that Abram had the place forever for him and his offspring. So I want to talk to you this morning. See, I don't know if you've ever had a thing that you saw in a picture or saw in, in, in something that looked different in person. You ever had something that, that you, you chose because of the way it looked, but then once you actually really saw it, it wasn't what you thought that it was? See, Lot chose the land, the plains of Jordan, because of how it looked. He chose it because it looked good in the moment. He chose it because it was well watered, it was beautiful, it was the most desirable that he could see around and that's why Lot chose where he was. But then once he got into the midst of it, he realized that it wasn't what he thought it was. He realized that it wasn't what he was hoping that he was going to, what he was believing for. And it turns out that the thing that he thought was a great opportunity was later destroyed. The thing that he got so excited about that he pursued relentlessly was later destroyed because it wasn't all that he thought it was. And that's kind of how life can go sometimes. Right? You get a new opportunity. You get so excited about it. You start pursuing it. But then it doesn't turn out the way that you thought it would. And I believe that our first instinct, that's just human nature, is to blame God. Or, or to think that we're being punished. Like, I'm being punished for something that I've done, when in fact we, everybody say we, we chose to settle. We blame God, but we're the ones who chose to settle in the place that we settled at. So for this last week of margin, I wanna to talk to you about distractions. And I wanna to talk to you for a few moments on the subject, don't settle. Don't settle, let's pray. God, I thank you for what you have already done in this place today. I thank you that your presence is so evident. I thank you for the worship that we've already had to just get the atmosphere and the presence just right in this place. And God, I thank you that it is now conducive for you to do what only you can do. And Lord, I pray for these next few moments that you would help every person in this room and every person joining us online to hear from you, to see you, not to hear and see from me. Lord, I pray that you would help nobody to leave today the same way that they came in or the same way that they tuned in. And we thank you for it today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Now, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever seen a picture online, but then when you saw in person didn't match the picture? I don't know if anybody in here has ever done online dating. I have not. Nothing wrong with it, but I just haven't done it because God sent me who I needed. But, but sometimes you may do some online dating. You may see somebody in a picture 
But then you get to them in person and they don't match. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Catfish. Some of y'all acting all sanctified because it comes on MTV. Don't act like you don't know about the show Catfish where it's people that aren't really who they say they are. For those of you who are going to act all holy, I'll tell you what it is. But sometimes we see something in a picture and it doesn't really match what we see in person. That's why I never book a hotel unless I've been there or somebody I know highly recommends it. Because photographers are slick. They're slick. They, they know they're, they're skilled. They know how to get the proper angle. They know how to get the proper lighting, right? They know how to use Photoshop. Sometimes they may even use a filter. I'm sick and tired of people posting hashtag no filter on pictures that clearly have a filter on them. Some of y'all jokers, y'all ain't slick. You put hashtag no filter and you've got like six filters. We know that you ain't been to the beach. So like clearly if I post and I'm looking all tan, I've used like six filters because I'm not tan. But even when we were listing our house, Nicole, she said, you know, I'm just afraid that the pictures are so good that they're too good that when people actually get to the house, they're going to be disappointed with what they see. Like the house looks good, but the pictures look too good. And I'm afraid they're going to be disappointed when they actually show up. What I'm trying to say is just because it looks good in a picture doesn't mean that it is. And if you put too much trust in the picture, then you risk being disappointed. And I learned this the hard way a few months ago when I was in charge of booking our anniversary trip. One year anniversary trip. Husband's in charge of booking it because she's pregnant. So I'd be doing everything around the house. Just kidding. And, and so I'm in charge of booking the trip, and somebody told us we should go to Hatteras, North Carolina. How many of you heard of Hatteras, North Carolina? One, two, three. Yeah, me neither. It's on the outer banks of North Carolina. It's like an island. It takes 10 hours to get there. Bad decision. We were only staying for three days. 10 hours, whether you drive or whether you fly, because if you fly, you fly about three hour, or two hours to North Carolina, not to mention all the, the security at the airport. Then you have to drive five hours to this place because it's in the middle of nowhere. So I chose to take her to Hatteras, North Carolina. Never been there before, never knew anybody to stay at a hotel there. So I get online and I Google it, right? I, I start Googling the best places to stay. And I find that there's this great place with beautiful pictures. It looks awesome. Great rooms, great pool, beautiful beaches, which is important because Nicole loves walks on the beach with me, nobody else, only me. So I get on and I'm like, man, this place looks awesome. So then I Google review it and everybody's got great reviews. So I call and I book the place based on what I'm looking at. And I'm proud of myself because I've gone out on a leap of faith here, y'all. Right? I'm outside of my comfort zone. I, Dad always preaches it. I always preach it. Get outside of your comfort zone. Great things happen outside of your comfort zone. And I'm outside of my comfort zone. I'm living what I'm preaching. But it's the last time I ever do that. Because I booked this place and we drive 10 hours. 10 hours with a pregnant woman in the car. And we finally get there. Siri, the Siri our, our GPS, it goes, you have reached your destination. You ever been told you reached your destination and you had to take a double look? Because I looked to my right and I, literally, I immediately started rebuking it in the name of Jesus. I'm like, this is not... You guys, it was a, I'm not lying to you, it was a gravel driveway. Now listen, we're not bougie, okay? We're not bougie, but it's a gravel driveway to a hotel that we're paying money for. So, so Nicole, and this is, this is when I knew it was bad. This is when I knew, like, I messed up. Nicole, who is the most positive person I know, looks at me and says these words, is this it? <laughs> Is this, is this, you know, is this it? So, so we turn and you got, it's a, it's a house. It's like this dude's rundown house. See, I didn't see any pictures of the outside. 
And this dude had built two buildings that are just as run down behind his house for people to stay at. But there's nowhere else to go. We're on an island. We've driven 10 hours. I'm tired. We, we don't have anything else. I've already paid half of it. So I'm like, we, we might as well try it. And Nicole says, maybe it'll be better inside. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, for speaking some faith. Because I ain't got it. We get inside and the guy starts showing us this tour around this place. And he's like, you know, this place has withstood multiple hurricanes. I'm like, we can tell. <laughs> you know, you don't have to tell us. And then he goes around and he shows us where the pool's at. I'm like, you mean like the whirlpool? Like a little hot tub? I mean, what is that little sorry excuse for a pool? It's the smallest pool I've ever seen in my life. Ain't nobody trying to swim in that pool. It's got this covering over it. It is not. I said, sir, is this the pool that was on the website? He's like, no, no, this isn't that pool. That, that pool, uh, it got taken out by a hurricane a couple years ago. <laughs> years. This guy's had years to update the website, and he still has that sorry pool on there. So then Nicole speaks up because he's like, and this is the ocean. And she says, well, where's the beach? Because there ain't no beach. It's just like the marsh, like grass that's taller than you, and the mud, and then the ocean. I ain't tracking in all that stuff to get to water. And he says, oh, no, we're on the sound side. This is the sound. I'm like, English, what's the sound side? Like, that means nothing to me. I'm not from here. I'm mad. And when I'm mad, I'm bad. And so I'm like, what does that mean? He said, well, you know, this is the sound side. We don't have beaches over here. But there's a great beach three miles down the road. This joker took pictures of a public beach three miles down the road and posted it on his website like it was their beach. So the pool wasn't real. The beach was not real. But because we're young, dumb, and in love, we still made the best out of it and had a good time. Not today, devil. Not on my clock. You know what I'm saying? But, but see, it wasn't thanks to anything that we saw in the pictures. It wasn't thanks to anything that was presented to us. I chose the place based on the picture. But when we got there, we realized that nothing in the pictures was true. He used false pictures to get us to buy into something that was not even there. He used false pictures to get us to buy into something that did not even exist. And this is what the devil's done to so many of us. He has used false pictures to get us to buy into some things and to make some decisions to do some things that are not even there. Because it's so easy to become enamored with the first thing I need you to see today, the surface level. The surface level. See, Lot looked in verse number 10, and it says that he looked out. And when he looked out, he saw around him and the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zor, well watered like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. The whole plain looked good. Lot looked around, and everything looked good. You ever had a moment in life where everything looked good? but everything wasn't good? Lot looks out and everything looks good, but it wasn't good. You may be choosing some land in your life to take root in because of the way it looks, but if you're only taking the land because of how it looks and not following what God said, you'll settle. You might be entering into a new opportunity because of how it looks, but if you only take it because of how it looks and not based on what God said, you're gonna settle. Let me get real personal. You may be entering into a relationship because of how it looks. But if you only enter because of how it looks, instead of following what God said, you're going to settle. If you enter into whatever it is in your life, just basing it on how it looks, instead of following what God said, you're going to settle. And I get it. I get it. You're tired of waiting. You've been waiting for a long time. And this is the best Thing you can see. Like this is the best thing you can see. So I get it, like I understand. But but just because you can see it doesn't mean that you should take it. 
just because you can access it, just because it's accessible to you, does not mean that you should enter into it. Just because it's accessible to you does not mean that you should take it. Lot chose the land based on how it looked. And everything looked good. And many of us are settling for less instead of waiting for more. We're settling for less in our finances. We're settling for less in our relationship. We're settling for less in our marriages. We're settling for less in our, in our, rela- in our ministry. We're settling for less instead of waiting for more because we're tired of having to wait. We're tired of waiting. We're tired of sitting and not seeing anything that God has said. And I know you're like, Dustin, you don't understand my situation. You don't understand how long I've been waiting. You don't understand how painful it is. Does anybody have a promise from God? Like anybody have something you're believing God for in your life? Like, God, I know that you said this. Nobody could talk me out of it. And it's hard when you've been waiting to see what God said, but you're not seeing it yet. It's hard to, to be waiting on the thing that you believe that God said. And the pain of waiting is so hard. But the pain of waiting is far less than the pain of settling. The pain of waiting on what God's wanting to do is far less than settling in Sodom and Gomorrah. The pain of waiting to see what God promised you come to fruition is way way less than the pain of settling in the wrong place and having to leave your life. And I believe God sent me today to tell somebody that what God is wanting to do in your life is worth the wait. It is worth the pain. It is worth the sleepless nights. It is worth the hard work. It's worth the frustration of looking at where you're at and saying it's not what God said. Don't stop trusting. Don't stop believing. Don't stop hoping and knowing that God is going to do because the best thing that God has for your life is on the way. The best thing that God is wanting to do is coming your way. But if you settle... If you settle for what looks good, then you'll miss it. If you settle for something that looks the most beautiful, that looks good enough. See, I'm tired of settling for good enough. I'm tired of followers of Jesus settling for good enough. And one of my greatest concerns is that us as followers of Jesus have began to lower our level of expectation to the level that we're living. We began to lower our level of expectation down to where we're at instead of raising our expectation level up to the level of where God said we're going. We began to lower and to expect less than what God said. We've expected less than God's best because it's been 10 years since our marriage didn't have an argument. We're just hoping and praying, God, give me one day that I can get through and everything be okay. Give me one day for us not to have something to fight about. Instead of believing that God can completely restore your marriage. Because we've been without a job for so long, we're just hoping and praying for something, anything. It does not matter what it is. Instead of believing that God can give you a better job than you had before. Because we've been facing depression for so long and we've been so low for so long, we're just hoping and praying that we can have one reason to smile. God, if I could just have one reason for one smile, then I'll be happy today. Instead of believing and knowing that God can give us unconditional joy. We're settling for less. Tell somebody, don't settle. Don't settle. We're settling for less. And here's the truth, and don't get mad at the messenger. But but as long as you can live with less than God's best, you will. As long as you can live with less than what God has for you, you will. As long as you can live with less than the best, you will. And what God is wanting to do, it's worth the wait. But if you stop and if you settle, then you're going to miss out on what God is wanting to do. We're settling for less than God's best. And I believe today that God said that somebody, and I don't know who it is. It may not be for everybody, but if it's you, you can go ahead and grab it. But somebody needs to raise your level of expectation again. Somebody needs to raise your level of hope again. Somebody needs to raise your joy again. You need to raise your trust again. You need to raise your belief again. You've been settling for too long. You've been settling for what it looks like. 
You've been settling for what looks good. But God is saying to trust bigger, to dream bigger, to hope bigger, to believe bigger, to pursue bigger instead of settling for less than what God is wanting to do. Tell somebody, don't settle. settle. Tell the other person that was your second choice, your lesser choice, don't settle. settle. (laughs) Lot was led by what looked good. He was led by what looked good on the surface, by what he could see. And it says in verse 11, he chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. And the two men parted company and Abram lived in the land of Canaan while Lot lived among the cities of the plain near Sodom. Abram ended up where God wanted him to be. In Canaan. But Lot never even consulted God. Did you see that? It says Lot chose for himself. Lot chose for himself where he was going to live. And the next thing I need you to see today is that you have to be sold out. You have to be sold out. See, both of these guys, this is why I love the story. They're they're both in the same situation. They both need to find somewhere to go. They need to find an answer. And they both sold out to something. Abram uh, sold out to the following, to the leading of God. But Lot sold out to himself. He sold out to what looked good. And this is this is what if you don't hear anything else, I say this is the thing that I need you to hear, because this is the thing. A couple months ago, we were living in the basement. And I didn't sleep very well in the basement of this house. And God woke me up one night. And literally, as I woke up, this thought was in my mind. This is what he woke me up with. And I thought it was just for me. But then uh, this past week, he was like, no, I need you to bring it to the church. So I'm bringing it to the church. And if it's not for you, it's okay. Just throw it back. But if it's for you, grab it and take it. Whatever it is, I don't care. But it's on you. That's what I'm trying to say. But this is what God said to me. He said, don't settle for who you want to be at the expense of who you were made to be. Don't settle for for who you want to be at the expense of who God made you to be. Don't settle for who who you see online and who you see at your job and who you see at church that you're wanting to be like at the expense of who God made you to be. Some of us are throwing away the purpose and the calling that God gave us trying to pick up somebody else's. Don't settle for who you want to be at the expense of who God called you to be. Lot had a free choice. He had a free choice. He could pick whatever he wanted. And he did not even take the time to consult God. He didn't even take the time to pray about it. He just settled. He pursued what he wanted instead of seeking what what God wanted. And a lot of us are making too many decisions based on what we want instead of what God wants. Lot had free choice of anywhere. And he was given the option to choose, and he did not ask God. But instead, he just handled it on his own. But Abram consulted God and ended up where God wanted him to go. See, Lot sold out to what looked good. He sold out to what looked good. And many of us are selling out. We're selling out. And that's good. That's that's good, right? To sell out, to go 100%. That's what you've always taught me. To go 100%. Keep it 100. Go all the way to sell out at whatever it is. But many of us are selling out and we're striving and we're fighting and we're pushing and we're trying and we're so tired because nothing's happening the way that we want it to happen. Nothing's happening how we thought that it would happen, how we thought that it should happen. And we're blaming God, but it's not God's fault. It's just that we settled in the wrong place. And we're too focused on the wrong thing that we don't have time for the right thing. We're too focused on on the place that we chose that was not even what God had for us. That we don't have time to embrace what God did have for us. And what he did want to do in our lives. And we're distracted. We're distracted by by the appearance instead of the substance. We're we're distracted by, by what looks good. Instead of what is good, we're distracted by what looks right instead of what what is right. See, in the words of Prince, all that glitters ain't gold. 
Lot sold out to a distraction. Are you selling out to a distraction? Have you sold out to the wrong things? See, Lot sold out to a distraction, but Abram followed what God said. And it said in verse 15 that God told Abram, he said, all the land that you see, everything that you see to the north and south, east, west, all the land that you see will be given to you and your offspring forever. All the land that you see. See, the last thing I need you to see today is that there's a set time. There's a set time. God told him, he said, all the land that you see will be given to you and your offspring forever. God told Abram that, but he didn't tell Lot that. He, he told Abram that all that he saw would be his and his offspring forever, but he didn't tell Lot that. Why? Because Lot settled and Abram didn't. Lot settled in the wrong place, and Abram didn't. Lot settled for what looked good, and Abram didn't. And some of us are not seeing what God said, not because God didn't say it. Not because God didn't speak it into your life. Not because you're a bad person. Not because you messed up. But because you settled in the wrong place. Some of us are settling in a place that we were just supposed to pass through. Some of us are settling in the place and we get there and it's comfortable and we stop there. But that's not where God wanted us to stop. He wanted us to go a little further. Some of us are settling in a relationship that was just supposed to prepare us for who God had for us, but we got comfortable and we settled down in the wrong place. Some of us are settling in an experience that was just supposed to prepare us for the new experience that God had for us and were causing us to miss out on what God had. Some of us have settled in the wrong place and we're missing out. We've settled in a job that was just supposed to train us and prepare us so that we could own our own business, but we got so comfortable with the paycheck that we settled in a place that we were never supposed to be at. And it's no wonder we're so unhappy, and it's no wonder we hate Monday, and it's no wonder we dread going to work, because we settled. Because we settled. Some of us are settling in the wrong place, and we're so confused, and we're so frustrated. It's like, God, what's going on? I don't understand. I don't get it. Why my life is so frustrating. Nobody's going to be real this morning. It's okay. I'll be real. I don't get why nothing that you said is happening. I'm almost 30, God, and I ain't seen it yet. I'm almost 60. I'm almost 80. Where is it at? God, why didn't you do it? Why haven't you brought it to pass? And the whole time God's saying, if you get up from where you're at and move to the place I called you to, then you'd be able to see what it is that I want to do. We've settled in the wrong place. It's the last last thing. Do I have time? Last thing, and I promise I'll let you get to your Sunday afternoon nap. Like, promise. but, But do I have time? Like, one more thing. Can I just show one more thing? Because, because I was, I was talking to God this week. And um, I'm real blunt when I talk to God because I don't, I mean, I I think you can be. It's a relationship. So I'm like, you know, like, God, I get it. Like, I understand how to relay the part about Lot, right? He messed up, right? He, He settled in the wrong place. I get that. I understand that. But like, how do I, how do I encourage the people that haven't settled but haven't seen it? Right, because, because some of us have settled, right? We'll be honest. Yeah, I settled. Sorry, I messed up. And today, then the service, we're going to have a time. We're going to repent. We're going to be like, God, I'm sorry. I'm going back to where you told me to go. I've gotten off on my own. I've gotten off in the flesh, but I'm going back. But, but, but what about the people that have been waiting for years and you still haven't seen it? You've been waiting. And I think this is, I think, I think this is the reason the law settled. Because he saw something that was already good. Why would I wait for something good when I can have something good right now? That's what I think. I'm not saying it was right. I'm just saying I understand Lot a little bit. I understand where he was coming from. But I think that, I think that for some of us, we're like, God, I've, 
I've been waiting. I haven't settled. Like even this whole sermon, you're like, you know, this is great, man. And, and I hope the people that have settled, they get it right. But like, God, I haven't settled anywhere. Nothing is the way it's supposed to be. Why am I not seeing it? And so I said to God, I was like, God, you know, these people, some, some of these people that, that'll be there today, they haven't settled for 60, 70, 80 years, and they still haven't seen it. But Abram, he didn't settle, and he saw it right away. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, no, he didn't. And I was like, yes, he did. <laughs> he said, no, he didn't. And I said, yes, he did. Because I'm stubborn. I was raised that way. <clears throat> and he said, he said, reread the text. So I reread verse 15. And it says in verse 15, it says, all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Okay. Read it again. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I get it. I get it. No, you don't. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Now, if you will give something, that means what? You haven't given it yet. If you will give something, it means that it has not yet been given. Now, if you read over a couple more verses, you'll see Abram got the land, but he still didn't have the offspring. There was a two part to that promise. All the land that you see, I'll give to you and your offspring. And it was many more years until Abram ever saw the fulfillment of the promise. I'm talking to somebody today who feels like giving up, who feels like quitting. Because then God took me. This is when I really got it. He took me to Galatians 6:9. And it says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the appointed time, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest you will reap a harvest you will reap a harvest if if at the proper time you will reap a harvest wait if you do not give up if you do not settle if you do not stop with less than God's best, if you do not stop in the pain, if you do not stop in the frustration, you will see the harvest if you do not give up. Stand on your feet in this place today.